Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's been a really long time since I've put you guys on my head, so welcome to my point of view. <laughs> so you guys are on my head today because I'm trying to pack orders and I also wanted to answer some Q&A questions that I asked on my Instagram at Potty Mouth Jewelry. So I just thought this would be the easiest way to multitask and answer questions. Well, packing orders. I'm just gonna pack some potty mouth orders right now just because I will be talking and packing at the same time and I don't want to mix anything up between the peace and love orders and the potty mouth orders. I have everything prepped. I have all the keychains and hand stamp bracelets and studs and my box is over here. I have the little glassines that the bracelets go in and the glassines that the keychains go in and my tissue paper cut up, so I tried to prep as much as possible so that this is easy. <laughs> okay, so the first question that I got is, what is the most challenging part about having two shops? And honestly, it's not that bad. I've had two shops for so long that it hasn't seemed really difficult so far. One thing is that you can't be logged in to two Etsy's in one browser, at least I don't think you can, but I have Safari and Chrome, so I just log into one Etsy shop in Safari and then the other Etsy shop on Chrome, and then I'm able to access both of them easily without having to continuously log in and log out. Maybe one thing that I'm paranoid about is just accidentally packing the wrong thing. Like, to, to make everything easy, I have very similar earring cards for both of my shops. I have very similar thank you cards for both of my shops. But because they do look so similar, sometimes I'm paranoid that I'm accidentally gonna pack like potty mouth branding with a peace and love order and then they're gonna be like, why is there a poop <laughs> on my packaging? Or just get really confused, but I don't think that's happened yet knock on wood but I would say that's probably a challenging part you just have to really pay attention okay so these are two best bitches gold keychains going to Jesse let me pack all of these bracelets just so they're ready and easier to put in the envelopes the next question is how I got started and I'm gonna assume that they're talking about my potty mouth shop since that's where I asked the questions. But my first Etsy shop was Peas and Love and I sold a lot of hand stamped jewelry, inspirational phrases, and just like stuff to make people feel better. And at one time my mom was going through a really hard time and I stamped her the bracelets keep fucking going and fuck this shit. And I decided to add them to my Peas and Love shop. And those actually ended up being bestsellers on Peas and Love. And a lot of people were starting to thank me for making stuff with swear words on it. And I also offered custom bracelets. So a lot of people started ordering custom bracelets with swear words since they saw the keep fucking going and fuck this shit bracelets. I guess they figured since I had stuff with swear words on it already that I was okay stamping things with swear words. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm on to something here. Like maybe people actually want like a place that they can go to to buy stuff with swear words on it. And I decided to open Potty Mouth. And for all you newer Etsy shops, it took me about a month to get a sale on Potty Mouth. So it does take a while to get started when you have a completely new shop, especially because you kind of have to rely on getting lucky for someone to buy from you, even though you have no reviews and no sales. But I had a pretty good amount of experience, like doing titles and descriptions and taking photos from Peace and Love. So one month to get a sale is actually not bad. I think the Peas and Love Etsy shop took me several months to get a sale. The next question's funny. Someone asked, what is your favorite swear? I think the most versatile swear word, I mean, everyone knows, <laughs> is fuck. Like you can use it in so many different ways and put it 
practically anywhere in a sentence and it'll make sense. But I think the funniest one, the one that just makes me laugh is shit. And it's kind of ironic because my logo is a shit. <laughs> but I just like when people say it really dramatically when they're like, shit, like, <laughs> I used to have a roommate that I would crack up every time he said the word shit because he just said it so dramatically. He would hold on to the shh part so long. I don't know. I guess it's one of those things you have to hear to understand. The next question is a really good one and I thought about it for a while when I first saw it, but it's what's your favorite and least favorite thing about owning a business and my favorite thing is the freedom especially this time of year it really reminds me how much i like owning my own shop and being my own boss because vacation and worrying about pto time used to be such a struggle like i would actually get so sad during this time of year if i couldn't take extra time off to be with my family or or just flat out tell my parents that i couldn't go or i couldn't stay for very long because i didn't have enough pto and i just found that so stressful like i like being able to be there for my family and if there's ever an emergency that i can just up and leave and and just like communicate with my customers that I'm going somewhere or that I need extra time or just close up the shops and not worry about getting orders for a bit. So that's my favorite thing. My least favorite thing is probably all the pressure. Like to to be able to make more money, like that's all on you. That's all on you researching what products do well. That's all on you to market. And you almost get the feeling like you can't ever stop working because you're trying to come up with new things that are going to sell so that you can make more money. It's not like a typical nine to five where usually every year you get a certain raise or you can just move on up and get more money as you move on up. Everything depends on you. The next question I kind of briefly answered, but they asked how long did it take your business to boom? So. My first Etsy shop, Peace and Love, it took literally months to get my first sale. And what I sold isn't even what I sell right now. I sold like Shambhala bracelets. And then I transitioned to hand stamp just because I like the sturdiness of a stainless steel bracelet. Hold on a second. This person ordered a custom stamp bracelet on an eighth inch and I accidentally stamped it on a quarter inch. So they're getting two bracelets. <laughs> this is Doritza, I think she says she watches my videos. So Doritza, you're getting two bracelets. <laughs> so yeah, Peace and Love took several months to get a sale. I did pay for Etsy ads just so that I could increase exposure. I think it's something that you kind of need to do when you're a new shop. Otherwise, people might not even find your listings. And after I started getting a few sales, I was still paying for ads and it was almost like breaking even for a few months. And I remember just being excited that I even broke even because I kind of knew that I had to go through that phase where you're just trying to get sales and build up your reviews and build a good reputation. Cause just think about it. Like if you go on Amazon and you see an item that has absolutely no reviews, you're probably kind of weary about that item and probably not gonna buy it. So it's kind of the same for Etsy. If you're like really new and have no sales, and no reviews, like it's gonna take a while for that one person to be like, okay, I'm gonna give this shop a chance because I really like the item they're offering and the listing. I think Potty Mouth took maybe like six months to a year to, whoa, she go barking. Chico. <laughs> Anyways, I think Potty Mouth took like six months to a year to start to really pick up and the holiday season helped with that a lot. And also I feel because since it's so niche, like people are probably looking up like swear word gifts or funny gifts for friends or just, you know, curse words and my stuff's probably closer to the top. So 
niching down definitely helps a lot on Etsy because then you kind of reduce the amount of competition that you have. The next question is what influenced you in starting the shop? So I went to school for multimedia design and development with, oh my gosh, am I stupid? I can't remember. What is it called? With the concentration? Is that what it is? In web design and development. I actually wanted to go for graphic design because in school I always liked art. So I wanted to go for graphic design originally, but my dad is a, not to blame my dad, but he's kind of a techie computer geek and just said that it would be smarter to do web design and web development just because the world's headed in that direction and he was saying how apps were going to be very popular and that no one was going to be doing anything themselves anymore and they were just going to be using apps and he was obviously right because who does anything anymore you just use an app for it even for like websites like people get their own squarespace website like no one's designing their own website anymore or, or whatnot so he really wanted me to focus on the development part so I changed my major from graphic design to web development. While I was in college I found a part-time job that was related to that. After a few months the guy that was above me ended up quitting and I took his place so it turned into a full-time job. After a while of being there I really hated it and I ended up just working at like a music store and then after that I ended up serving tables just because I wasn't getting paid enough like the the first full-time job I wanted to stay there but I was there for a while and the boss above me did not or not the boss above me but the CEO like didn't want to give anyone a raise like the pay was really bad I went from part-time to full-time and didn't get a raise my raise was like having more hours <laughs> and after I graduated and got my degree I was hoping to be able to get paid more but they didn't want to the CEO straight up said why would I pay her more like he said this to my boss he said why would I pay her more when I can just get like a college student that will do the same work for less and sadly that's just how the world is sometimes she go oh, gosh can't do anything with this dog Sometimes people don't really care how experienced you are. They just want, you know, employees that'll work for cheap. So I went from there to being a server because I made more money serving tables. And I really enjoyed serving, but I always got the question like, if you have a college degree, why are you serving? Like, why don't you get another job? And I'm like, because I'm making more serving than I did when I did have a full-time job in my field. But Eventually serving just got old like working in the restaurant industry is very very hard and <clears throat> It just takes a lot of like physical energy and emotional energy and like always remembering People's orders and I don't know. It was just a lot of stress. So after a couple years of doing that I started looking for like an office job again, and then eventually I found an office job Sorry, this is like a really long-winded answer, <laughs> but eventually I found an office job for a up-and-coming yoga apparel company and I just thought that that was a really cool opportunity and they were e-commerce based, like my first full-time job. I think I forgot to mention that my first full-time job was e-commerce based. So because this yoga apparel company was also e-commerce based and yoga apparel, which I was really excited about, I was like, okay, I'll apply for this. I ended up getting the job and then I was working there for almost a year. But just like the first full-time job, I was getting kind of miserable just because I don't like working in an office. Oh, I need to make one more best bitches keychain for this. I know I made this bracelet. I hope I didn't mess up packing something. So I have to get stickers for some of the orders. Let me pack something easier so I can keep talking. Yeah, so I just 
I, I really hated the feeling of being stuck in an office. Like I remember describing it to my mom as it feeling like it was draining my soul. Like I just hated doing the same thing every day and just feeling like the bosses were breathing down my back, making sure I was working 24 seven, even when there's nothing to do. Like that's like one thing I really hate. I hate having to like pretend that you're working, but there's nothing to do. So you're not really doing anything, but. I feel like a lot of jobs are like that. Like I'm not even sure why you have to work in an office for eight hours straight when you could probably get all of the work done in like two hours if you work really hard. So while I was working that job, I was obviously like bored out of my mind and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And just for fun on the side, I started a food Instagram with vegan food called Peas Love Vegan. It was actually named something else, but when I started the Peas Love Vegan shop, I changed the name of the Instagram to Peas Love Vegan. What am I doing? Textbook, keychain, and I need STFU. So I started that Instagram account and I took food pictures because my first full-time job I actually got a lot of experience with photography and editing photos so I really enjoyed that and I liked you know sharing plant-based food so I decided to just take pictures of food because I was like all the rage then like taking pictures of your pretty pictures of your food so I did that and my account was growing pretty quickly. I think at one point I got it to like 16K and I decided like, okay, since Etsy's kind of slow, let me see if I can do something with this account so I can try to get more sales. And I decided to start my Peas and Love Shopify. And I changed my Instagram foodie account to Peas Love Vegan, and there are a lot of like plant-based and vegan people in the community supporting me and ordering from my Shopify, but it was still kind of slow. <laughs> I was like, I really want this to turn into a full-time thing because I hate my job. So I was like, how do I, how do I get more sales? And I came across this girl named Kelly Yu, who is kind of like a body positivity. She was like a fitness inspo person that turned into body positivity because she realized how toxic her mentality was and you know that she wasn't actually taking care of herself and then she just started to put herself over working out and kind of teaching people to love themselves and i just really aligned with that and i asked her if she wanted to collaborate with me and make bracelets that had inspirational phrases like i'm enough and and warrior and worthy and when we launched the collection, the same day we launched the collection, I got like 50 orders and I was freaking out because <laughs> I had never gotten that many orders before and I was just like, wow, like finally, like something worked. And funny enough, that same day, my boss like blew up on me because for some reason I was in charge of ordering lunch for everyone and it's funny because i could never eat the food that they ate because they never ate from places that had plant-based food but i would still have to order for everyone and i messed up my boss's order accidentally and he like blew up on me because he thought i did it on purpose because like the week before I ordered Thai food and it was so unbearably spicy that they couldn't eat it and and he was just saying that like anytime the orders were messed up it was because of me and that I was doing it on purpose and being hateful towards them and and I don't know it was such a stupid thing <laughs> and he just blew up on me because I was like I you know I find it really hurtful that you would think I do that on purpose like it was really just an accident and he just yelled at me so much and I just got up and said like um I'm not dealing with this like the way you're talking to me is so degrading and I don't have to put up with this. Like, this is so unprofessional. I can't believe how you're acting right now. And he was like, well, you're not under contract, so you're free to go. And I'm like, okay, and I just left. And I just never turned back from that. Like I got my Shopify website with 50 orders on it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this is a sign. 
like the same day that I quit my job, I get I got this many orders. Maybe this is something that I can keep doing. And I did. That's how I started my shops full time. I didn't do it on purpose, but I was just so miserable after working in nine to five for so long and finally was able to have a taste of like what it's like to make money on your own and i just decided that you know what i'm gonna do everything that i can to keep it this way because i'm tired of working for bosses that either don't want to pay you what you deserve or don't respect you <laughs> and honestly i just found it boring like i'd rather do what i want than what someone else wants me to do Okay, this next question is someone who just said that they're a newer subscriber and don't really know much about me, so. And I don't think I've shared that much personal information about me, so I guess I'll share with you guys too. I don't think I've ever pr properly introduced myself, but my name's Tana, <laughs> and I think most of you know that from my channel name. I'm 26 years old. I live in the DMV area. I am married to my husband nick we got married in april during peak corona <laughs> and our wedding actually got canceled or we had to cancel our wedding and we decided to just do like an elopement style intimate ceremony instead we have two dogs um, one of them's a shiba inu named nyla uh, the other one is a mutt named shiko we got shiko close to the beginning of this year because um, my childhood dog named Star passed away December of last year, a little, like a few days after Christmas. She's actually in my very first studio vlog, so you guys can see her there. I was hoping to be able to make more studio vlogs with her and Nyla, but I only got to one. She was really old, she was 16, so <laughs> I swear like every day, I'm like, how are you still alive? <laughs> Cause she's a bigger dog and usually big dogs don't live as long as smaller dogs but she was also a mutt like shiko and they seem to have really good genes so yeah nyla and shiko are our fur babies we don't have kids yet we just got married oh my gosh nyla there's our fur babies making noise but yeah we don't have kids yet we just got married so you know we're doing the whole like enjoying our marriage especially since w what have we gotten to enjoy we we haven't even had a honeymoon <laughs> so Hopefully, uh, better times come soon because I also don't want to be very old and have a kid very late. My parents had me at like 19, so they already make me feel old for being 26 and not having a kid yet. <laughs> they also asked where I would like to travel to. Um, I guess like as a kid growing up, I mean everyone says this and my mom used to say it all the time, but want to go to like Italy like I've never been to Europe I just want to go anywhere in Europe honestly I think I want to go to like Ireland I feel like it's super underrated and, and I've heard that it's very pretty so that would be a cool place to go also Swiss Switzerland like I mean that's Instagram's fault like all the pictures of the Swiss mountains it's like so beautiful I actually haven't been out of like North America I've only been to Canada and Mexico <laughs> but anyways the the next place I'd like to travel to is just like Toronto I've been to Toronto a couple times by myself and I haven't gone with Nick and the food the plant-based food in Toronto is freaking amazing like I've been to LA and Portland and New York but I don't know what it is like I just really like the food the vegan options in Toronto or in that area and in Burlington, Ontario, there's Kelly's Bake Shop and everything's vegan and soy free and nut free and I don't know, free of a bunch of stuff. And it's so good, like you cannot tell at all. I think that's the only place that I've had so many vegan desserts that you couldn't even tell that they were vegan. So yeah, that's where I wanna go next. I mean, with Corona, Americans aren't allowed anywhere. <laughs> We're not even allowed to Canada, so I feel like once we get to the point where the borders are open and we can even cross Canada, like that's the first place that I'm gonna be going. Okay, I'm gonna figure out where this bracelet went. I hope I didn't pack it in something else. This one's got a gift message, so I gotta print that and I have to go make a, another keychain real quick. But um, I 
basically covered almost all of the questions and my GoPro battery doesn't last very long so I'm just gonna end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me multitask, pack, and answer some questions and oh I want to show you guys something. If you follow me on Instagram you'll know that I've been working on the Christmas dangles. I've had some of you guys ask when they're coming out so I'm hoping to have them out around you know American Thanksgiving maybe the Wednesday before or a small business Saturday that follows afterwards. It depends on how quickly I can make a bunch of them but I showed these on Instagram. This one's are a pair of studs because for the Halloween dangles I didn't do a studs option so I kind of regretted not making something for people who don't like wearing dangles. So these are little peppermint candies. I added the little ends just so that it looks like it's actually wrapped and so that it wouldn't just be like a white and red circle. So these are the stud options I'm gonna have. And then I made this little Christmas tree. I wanted to make something that was a little different than like the typical red and green so I chose a white Christmas tree. This is actually kind of in honor of my paternal grandmother who passed away a couple years ago. She had a white Christmas tree and she was like the only person growing up that I saw had a white Christmas tree with rainbow lights so I just wanted to make that in honor of her. I hope my dad's not watching this and like tearing up. <laughs> but. Yeah, so I did that. I scored like the little lines of the lights on there and then used like a toothpick to put each little dot of color and then I just have a little star tree dopper. And then the last one's kind of a surprise, but if you follow me on Instagram, then you know what it is. And I think it's actually gonna be the most popular one. So go check it out on Instagram. It's only kind of a surprise because I need to redo it because painting it, I had some struggles with it since it's so tiny. So I think I need to like adjust the lines that I scored onto it and make it a little bigger just so it's easier to paint. But if you're not following me at Potty Mouth Jewelry, you can follow me there and you'll probably find out what it is. But yeah, if you know what all three are, comment down below which one's your favorite. Okay, thanks guys. See you in the next studio vlog. I found where the missing fuck fuck shit bracelet is. I think I put it with the fuckity fuck fuck. <laughs> and I didn't even wrap this in the tissue paper. Okay, that, this is the last time I'm packing and doing a Q&A. <laughs> oh, there it is. Fuck fuck shit. <laughs> Okay, I think that's the only thing. Luckily, writing everything here and on here kind of helps me cross-check everything, so that's why I was able to catch it. Anyways, what do I say to end it? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! That was your end? Huh? <laughs>